Welcome to creating on-demand cascading dropdowns. In this video, we will cover how to create cascading dropdowns based on hierarchies within an IBM Cognos TM1 dimension using Enterprise Services and InfoPath. Cascading dropdowns are a series of two or more dropdown controls that depend on one another for their content. There are two methods for creating cascading dropdowns, a static, or on startup, and an on-demand dropdown. Static cascading dropdowns involve pulling the hierarchical structure of the data from a TM1 dimension only once, usually when the form first starts up. This is good for dimensions that do not have a large number of elements for example, less than a thousand items. On-demand cascading dropdowns, however, will refresh the content as the user makes a selection from a dependent control. This method is best when there are a large number of items in a dimension. On-demand cascading dropdowns help break down the amount of data that is needed into smaller chunks, keeping the network traffic low which is great for WAN users. We will start first by looking at a dimension in TM1, such as Business Unit. Notice that there are three levels within this hierarchy. For our demonstration, we will create a two-tier cascading dropdown using the levels below ABC Company Element. We will call the first level below the company the division level, and the bottom level we will call the department level. Let's now open up InfoPath and create a cascading dropdown form. First, we will add a layout table to hold the dropdowns and their labels. So in this example, we will create a 2x2 two two table and then adjust the size of the columns to hold the labels and the drop-down controls. In the first column we will add the label Division. And in the second row we will put in the label Department. Now let's add two drop-downs to the form, one in each row. The department dropdown will be dependent upon the selection the user makes in the division dropdown. InfoPath adds two new fields to the main data source when we add the controls and we will rename these to SEL Division and SEL Department. We use the SEL in front to indicate that this is what the user has selected for use as the division and department throughout the form. Now if we right click on the division dropdown and select drop down list box properties, we will be presented with a dialog that allows us to define what the source is for the list of items to display. You can select from manual fields in the form or items from an external data source. We will select Get Choices from an external data source. Now we need to define the data source that will be used to retrieve the elements from the business unit hierarchy. We click on the Add button and then select Receive Data and for enterprise services we will choose the SOAP web service option. Now we enter in the URL for the web service in our case http slash slash localhost slash es slash esweb dot asmx and then select next. Enterprise services will then list all of the functions that are available to us. For this demo, we will be using TM1 member children. You could also use TM1 dimension members by level from member as well, especially if you wanted to skip levels between the levels in a hierarchy. For our case, the TM1 member children works best. Once we have it selected, we can click Next. 
At this point, InfoPath is prompting us to put in some values that will return a structure which is representative of what we will be seeing when the form is used during runtime. So in the dim name field, we will put business unit. And then in the member ID, we will put ABC company. InfoPath will query enterprise services to obtain the structure at this point. In this dialog, we can then specify the default values that we want to use when this data source is first accessed. We specify the same values as we did for the structure, in this case DIM name is business unit, and member ID is ABC company. We'll press next. For our purposes, we do not want to store the data in the template because we're going to publish this as a web page, which is already online, so we can leave this unchecked and then press next. At this point, we can supply a name for the data source and we'll call it division list. Since this dropdown does not depend on any other value, we can allow it to be automatically retrieved when the form is opened. So we will leave this box checked and then click finish. Now the data source is added and we need to tell the dropdown where the items in the list will come from. By clicking on the button next to the entries box, we will be presented with a field list from the response we got back from the TM1 member children method. Drill down until you get to the member repeating element, which has a blue arrow in it, and then select OK. Next, we need to choose the values for the ID and the display. By clicking on the button next to the value box, we can choose ID and then hit OK. And then for the display name, we can choose name and hit OK as well. And this allows us then to have a different value shown to the user versus what is actually selected behind the scenes. So now we're ready to set up a dependent dropdown. Again, we right click and choose drop down list box properties external data source and click add and we will follow the same steps we did with the first drop down receive data soap web service we enter the URL HTTP esweb.asmx and then select TM1 member children now at this point we need to specify some values for InfoPath to capture a sample of the structure it will expect. So we can use the same values we did earlier. Dim name is business unit and member ID is ABC company. This next dialog again is asking for the default values so we can specify the same value for the dim name a business unit, but we don't need to specify anything for the member ID because we will do that at runtime when the user selects an item from the first dropdown. Choose next and skip storing the data in the template and press next. Let's enter the name of this as department list and for this list we do not want to query automatically when the form is first open because we want the user to select the item from the top drop-down first and then we will have the value we want to get the list of children for when that is selected. So let's uncheck this box. Let's set the value and the display names. and then drill to member and select OK. Now select the ID and then the name item and choose OK. So we have added the two drop-downs and their data sources. Now let's tie the first drop-down to the second. 
We do this by clicking on the Division drop-down and then show the Rules pane by clicking on the Manage Rule Toolbars button and then select New Action. In this rule, we will set the value that was selected from the Division drop-down and set it to the input parameter for the department list data source we just created. Let's give this rule a name. Let's call it set department list and add a set field value action. Now in the first box we put the destination location or where we want the answer to go. In this case the input parameter for the department's list data source. The input parameters are under the query fields group and then we drill to the TM1 member children params and select member ID and choose OK. This value must be set to the cell division field in the main data source we created earlier. So select the FX button, click insert field or group and choose cell division. You will see just a period in this box which means current control. This is OK. Now choose OK. Now that we've set the input parameter, we need to perform an action which is to query the data source. So let's add a new query for data action and select department list and choose OK. Finally, we will add one more rule and this is optional and that is to clear the selected value from the department list so that when they change to a different division it does not leave the old value that they selected earlier. So we will add a new set field value rule and this time we will set the cell department field to blank and then choose OK. So now this rule will set the value of member ID in the input parameter and then query the data connection and then reset the dependent drop-down to an unselected value. So let's see this form in action. InfoPath will confirm that we want to connect with an external data source. Just select yes. Now by selecting the executive, general, and administration, the user is presented with a list of departments for that division and as we change the division to sales and marketing the department list changes accordingly. Now we can close the form and save it. Let's call it on-demand cascading drop-down and drop down and close the form. Now let's go to Enterprise Services Manager and publish this form. We go to the manager and go to the forms tab and press upload. Now let's browse for the form and some my documents and choose open. Now we can upload the form and when that is complete we can click on the form and we have a web page that uses a cascading drop-down from a TM1 dimension. This concludes creating an on-demand cascading drop-down. For more information, contact us by email at info at carpedatuminc.com or on the web at www.carpedatuminc.com slash products.